Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, wall-to-wall -wall coverage as part of MongoDB's local events. This is the inaugural kickoff of a 20 city plus tour where they're going out to the street where the developers are, bringing it back to the people where the developers are. And we've got two great guests here. We've got Andrew Davis, an SVP, Senior Vice President of Products at MongoDB, and Steven Orban, VP of Migration at Google Cloud. Guys, great to see you. Steve, great to see you again. CUBE alumni here. John, Welcome. always a pleasure. Thanks for having Thanks me. Good back on. All right, let's get into it. You guys got some news. Congratulations, Google, Mongo, to be working together. Andrew, what's the news? A ton of good news for you, John. Good to be here. You know, I'll tell you, for me to be here in person with you and with the whole community, talking to developers, understanding what's resonating, a lot of news is resonating with developers. I think the most exciting thing of the day is Atlas Vector Search launching into public preview. You know, there's a great tie-in with generative AI, which of course we're excited to talk about with, with our Google partnership, but also the public announcement of our private preview for our stream processing capability, bringing that wonderful richness for developers of the power of the document model to data in motion and just unifying and making it easier to build elegant real-time applications. Also the general availability of our relational migrator, lowering the activation energy required to modernize off those legacy relational databases and move to a modern posture on MongoDB. And so many other announcements too. I mean, it's just, I'm so excited about it all and seeing great resonance out there. Well, you get the keys to the kingdom of products because you know, you got to see the customers, you got to look into engineering, and you got to be happy. MongoDB owns the developer experience, whether you're in the dorm room or the boardroom. You got the same motion. I'm writing software. And as you get better and bigger, you're impacting more critical systems, you got to think like a system thinker, you got to start designing stuff, and then when you get into open source and, and scales, like you guys are, now you're impacting the enterprise with the data platform, it's not new. Right. It's been around for years, it's just a total trajectory up to now the Gen AI, which is like the tailwind of epic proportion. Totally. And you guys are perfectly positioned for this. Yeah, no, I like the way you described it as the dorm room and the boardroom. You know, I was, I was talking to some customer executives here today and just, pointing out how we, there's always this tension. Do you focus on the sort of buttoned up enterprise developer in the bank, or do you focus on that hoodie wearing developer in the dorm, and the good news is they're essentially the same person. Maybe the enterprise developer isn't going to be using what the hoodie wearing developer's building with right now, but they're sure as heck going to be doing so in their hackathons, and they're having those hackathons. That's how they're staying ahead of the curve, and so, the key priority for us is to find out what's the commonality, what's the superset for both of those types of personas. Yeah. That's the top priority. And that, that's our North Star. Just, it always has been from the very beginning as a developer data platform. Let's talk about the relationship with Google. Obviously, yeah. Steven, you, your history, you've run big networks, you've set up operations, you know the developer market. Right now, we're in a world of developers are trying to figure out how to build these general AI apps, their data apps. Data is a critical part of of the application, not just some department organizing content and building dashboards. You have a, a key ingredient to the application, but it's also got to run. So you got to learn how to build them, know how to build them, get it right, then run it. Yeah. So you got to get good enough to run, but also the playbook, like say in MongoDB to run it, this is the generative AI opportunity right now. Every single alpha developer who's got, who sees opportunity is going to go run fast and create value fast. You got to set that up. What is your yeah. Gen AI strategy so, in the ecosystem? So, so we're super excited, first of all, about the partnership we have with MongoDB. And kind of like you said, with the developer and the hoodie or the enterprise developer, when my wife asked me, do you want pizza or chicken wings for dinner? I say, why choose? <laughs> you should just be able to kind of have both. So we're super excited yeah, yeah. about the, the partnership that we've you know, that we, we, we've been building on for a long time, frankly, but now with some of the announcements we made today around Mongo deploying some of our generative AI capabilities within their systems, it really sort of makes it even more accessible for developers of all ranges. So, just to highlight a couple of the use cases we're, we're working on together, uh, you know, the obvious one that everybody thinks about is chatbots and, and customer service. So now when customers are, want to ask MongoDB a question, uh, they're going to be able to have a chatbot-like experience on the website that, that again, is, is, has a lot of the Google Cloud Vertex AI capabilities underneath. I think one of the things that is also really kind of helping this be more approachable technology for developers is how they're also, Mongo's also developing a way to take 
natural human language and translate that into MongoDB queries using some of our Vertex AI capabilities. And MongoDB is already a very easy to use database that developers love, but sometimes when they want to create a complex query that they may have not yeah. um, uh, uh, had to do before, having a natural language interface to, to, yeah. to do that is super special. So from our perspective, <laughs> You know, we're committed yeah. to creating the most open and innovative ecosystem that includes partnerships um, uh, at every layer of the stack, which I can talk a little about more as the, part yeah. as the conversation pr progresses, but, 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 but having partners like MongoDB on the forefront of that's amazing. I'd love to, first congratulations on the news. The word language has come up a lot. Large language models, training languages. Before we get into that, just can you take a minute just to explain what is the Vertex product for developers? What, what, what's the positioning of it, why would they, be interested in yeah, using it? happy to do that. So, we think of the, at Google, we think of kind of our generative AI strategy in two main camps, at Google broadly. We have consumer use cases, which we have our BARD product for, and that's for consumers, our Gmail customers, for example, who want help planning a trip, or writing a song, or writing some sort of essay, or uh, help with sort of like a, a consumer-based question. And then for the enterprise use case, we have a lot of, all of our enterprise customers really want to be able to take advantage of these generative AI capabilities, but be able to continue to have control and security around their data and their own intellectual property. So what our Vertex AI platform allows these uh, developers and companies to do is to take, uh, think of them as copies almost as our, of our large language models, and then tune and adapt them with their own data and their own inferences and then make them available as APIs inside their own products. So that's essentially what Mongo did as example to create the translation layer between natural language and their queries. And that's what all of our enterprise customers are asking because they want to be able to use these large language models but do it atop their own data in a way where that data is not shared back with the model owner. Yeah, and that's good for their IP rights. And vec uh, the, the vector search stuff that you guys right. are working on, that ties in to this native to Mongo platform. Is that right? Is that yeah, so if you want to build one of these you know, expert system, chatbot type use cases, you're going to have to have that large language model in the mix so you can take advantage of Vertex for that. You're also going to have to have these inference endpoints where you summarize your own custom knowledge with numeric vectors. And vector search allows you to use those numeric vectors to find relevant meaning to what the user's prompting you for and to feed that into the large language model to get a cogent response back. It's this wonderful loop, and you know, at its core, it's not just vector, it's vectors that allow you to quickly find the appropriate operational data. Yep. So we think it's just such an obvious expansion to have your operational data store also support vectors. It's a perfectly rational thing to add to our developer data platform. And those software applications are going to be able to store so much metadata about this. You know, what kinds of responses are people getting? Who's doing what? Is it something that they wanted to see? Is it useful, is it not? And this allows you to continue to have that loop yeah. of training. And by the way, I just want to call out, for us to be able to partner so deeply with Google on this, I mean, talking about the real first movers in yeah. this space, just think about some of the seminal moments where, where we all realized what was coming when DeepMind demonstrated that Go, you know, the machine was going to win at Go. We didn't think that was coming yeah. for decades. So I mean, yeah. each step of the way, I know Google's doing things you know, that we haven't even seen yet. I can't even imagine that Stephen can't talk about, and so it's, it's exciting to be part yeah, of it. Yeah, and they, got, and they know data. They understand data, they understand open source, understand software. They have a lot of language yeah. stuff. I mean, the, feel, the feeling is, is mutual for sure, Andrew. We appreciate sort of you being such a sure. uh, early adopting first mover in a lot of these places, but for me personally, it's just a super exciting place to be. Uh, it's the reason I joined Google, is I could see how far ahead they were in yeah. analytics and AI in particular, and, you know, you don't have to look too far back in 2017, several Google scientists collaborated on the attention is all you need paper. L look it up if you haven't read about it already, but that's, that's where the yeah. transformer model science was invented. Yeah, it's huge. Um, which is now underpinning all of these generative AI models that we There's see no today. no doubt Google's got a treasure trove of, of brains, of talent, and expertise, and data, and code. And now the next question as we get kind of our toe in the water with AI, I hype aside, it's a real legit trend People are going to start integrating. This yeah. is a big topic here at the event, integrations. The integration with you guys, you got the, ve the vector database with, with what you guys and Vertex. That's going to be a big deal, integrating. You know a little bit about that, you guys do. How do people integrate? As they think about what might be down the road as they start investing in building out AI apps, ML AI, and running it on an AI ops, what are the integration touch points? What do you guys think? How do you frame that? How should people think about going down this new Cambrian explosion. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a shot at that one. I, I, 
to me, this is, there's another way to ask that question. You could flip it on its head and say, what are the appropriate abstractions that you're going to compose with and, uh, and combine together to take advantage of this next boom, this Cambrian explosion that's happening? And I would argue, you know, we, we've been moving towards this moment for years that you want to be able to have something that services all of your operational data. You want to build anything platform for operational data, and that's what we conceptualize ourselves as with this developer data platform. We want to be at this layer of the stack that's really focused on the data. The software that the data interacts with, excuse me, the data that the software interacts with. Guess what, the software stack, that's where all the integration points happen. New frameworks, new stacks, you know, we announced partnerships with Langchain and Hugging Face and others today, all of whom allow us with an open source framework to plug and play with Vertex and others. And so I think we're, we're just at the beginning here. We're going to see new trends, new frameworks, new stacks emerge, and it's absolutely the name of the so game Hugging here is going to be open composability. So Hugging Face is the embedding model piece of it? Hugging Face is the, is the place in which you can find off the shelf models to play with and operationalize them in any number of services, yes. Langchain is a popular framework well, for kind of doing that loop of generative AI, large language model, writing your code, prompting it all the way through. There's other players, Llama Index and many others. Yeah. All kinds of LLM ops coming quickly. 100%, I mean one of the funnest parts about working in this space in this, this moment in time is that the use cases are so diverse and there's so yeah. many of them. One of the most challenging parts about working in this space at this time is that the use cases are so right. uh, broad yeah. and sometimes people have trouble wrapping their heads around them. So yeah. you know, we, we, we spend a lot of time with our partners to try to yeah. help make those use cases much more real for our customers by putting them in context of other tools like MongoDB. And you're seeing the, the signals in the market, you guys have an incentive for 25K in mm -hmm. credits, so you leave, there's a lot of evangelizing, getting people understanding the playbook, which is get building. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, 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 and don't and worry about the other stuff, just get in there and let, let, let the universe take care of itself, because this is what people make mistakes in these early markets, they yeah. overthink it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not just get building, but get in there and share what you're doing. You know, we're all, this, this is a massive Open. new movement. People are learning how to build in new ways, and they need to share that with, with other people. You know, I was speaking to a customer of ours that's pr pretty far along using generative, actually generative accelerated a roadmap they were already on, and they had described building an entire domain-specific language to be able to express the, you know, the, the, essentially the, the software agents that they do and without that language, how could they test new versions without being confident that it wouldn't potentially do something you know, problematic or unexpected? So you realize we have to develop entirely new paradigms for testing yeah. and thinking about this. Uh, it's just the beginning. Well guys, thanks for coming on. I do think there's going to be these new use cases that might emerge. My final question is kind of out there. You can decide how you want to answer it. I believe there's going to be some use cases that are going to be unthought of before that are now gettable with some of the configuration changes and the enablement coming with AI. Stuff that could come out of left field that was never, insights that were never around before, or market, product market fit opportunities might emerge from developers playing over here and all of a sudden, boom, something happens. What some, some of the things that you guys think about that might emer emerge? Like, because I just see that the value creation with AI is being so fast. Yeah. I, th I think we're here today already, John. I think, I'm, I think we're seeing that uh, unravel right before, uh, un unfold right before our eyes right now. I'll, just, I'll give you an example that I'm super excited about. You have a lot of companies who have, for a long period of time, in their particular industry domain, been collecting lots and lots of different data. So let's say you have a legal database, or a news database, or a financial database that has a lot of like context-specific information that a lot of these companies have had to write their own very complicated query languages around to kind of trove through all of that data. Now, what we're seeing with things like enterprise search is those are able to not just be indexed very quickly using sort of search capabilities, but also summarized. So you could imagine, uh, you know, tell me if you're an insurance, you're collecting a bunch of insurance information and claims data and somebody says, show me all the policies I could potentially buy that would cover me for over a half a million dollars. Not only could you get all the policy documents with, with search, but you could summarize why which policy might be better than the other with natural language in a way that a human who maybe isn't an expert and doesn't have the time to go troving through yeah. the 100 policy documents that might make up that summarization. Uh, and I think it's just, we're going to yeah. see that across every different industry and there's going to be some extraordinary It's a different kind of data acquisition, um, extraction. For example, someone could say, what does Steven mean by his comment on the cube? 
<laughs> that you can't type that into a search engine. It has to go through our linguistic language via our large transcript. So domain specific data, if you have data, that's the value, right? I totally, mean, and, and you know, I think oftentimes we can over rotate in a sense into data, but it's, where's the data born? It's born in software, yeah. or in our case here, on this wonderful yeah. program. And so, if we look at empowering new experiences, you're asking what, what's coming? What's coming is, we're just at the beginning. Right now we're seeing these relatively slow, human-centric chatbot experiences, yeah. for example. That's cool, that's a start. But imagine the layered software yeah. on software, machine to machine, <laughs> sophisticated applications that are coming. Yeah. The versatility, scale, performance requirements of all of those. It's going to be extremely exciting. Yeah, you know, Dave Vellante, we've got to end because we're going to over time again. Again, the unconscious is great. Dave Vellante, a debate on our podcast all the time, and we're going to do it again tomorrow. Every inflection point, someone's disrupted out of the business. Mainframes got booted, mini computers by the PC. But now, we're in a market where agility is an equal opportunity employer. You don't have to be an old guard to be disrupted. You can be back in the game like a startup. So, there could be a young Steve Jobs, 20-something year old building AI apps, the next Bill Gates now in the industry. Yeah, the barrier and to entry. And still, the big guy can still win too. Yeah, the barrier to entry for uh, disruptive transformational tech is so low right now. What an exciting time to be alive. You can pivot if you're big, and you can disrupt if you're small. So the, the dilemma, is it a disruptive enabler or a sustainable enabler? Interesting question for another time. Steven, great to see you. Thanks for coming on, you guys are John, great. great to be Andrew, here. Thank Andrew, you thanks so John. much. With the head of product, and we got Google on theCUBE here. Breaking it down, the future of AI is going to be about the data, domain data, building the app. Software is the key, and running it on the cloud is going to happen. It's theCUBE coverage. We'll be back with more after this short break. <laughs>